guys so a lot of people have been tweeting me a link to this guy's video who made a horribly bigoted video on transgender people. It was one of those things that was extremely cringy for me to get through and watch, but it's a conversation that I've been seeing happen on a lot of different people's videos, not just this guy's, but I'm going to respond and hopefully it covers a lot of the topics that people have been thinking about lately. Man, I'm so bored. What can I do that's really disgusting but is socially acceptable for some reason and will get me lots of attention? I know, you can post a horribly bigoted video on YouTube that makes an entire group of people feel like they're not as good as you. Meanwhile, you can make yourself feel like you're smarter and better than all of them. And get lots of attention. I got it. Please, call me Jake Lynn. Oh, that sounds too much like Jacqueline. So his bright idea, his light bulb moment was to put a wig on, put some shitty makeup on, and say, hey, look at me, I'm transgender, and offend a bunch of people. Brilliant. Actually, no, it's even worse than that. He's going to make a video where he assumes the role of an expert on all issues regarding transgender rights, and uh, he's gonna tell you the truth. Hey guys, Hunter Avalon here, and I really hope you're ready for this video, cause I know I am. Let's begin. Truth is, being transgender is not normal. Oh God, I have been making videos on LGBT rights for a long time, for years and years and years, and this is one of the arguments that I hear regurgitated all the time. It's not normal, you guys. And I'm so irritated. I'm so tired of hearing this said like it's this fact of just brilliance that everyone's gonna be like, oh, you're right, it's, it's not normal. The fuck does being normal mean? Should we just all go by your standards? That's like the bar we should set? Oh, Hunter thinks that this is not normal, and Hunter thinks that this is normal. Now we know how to live our lives. Thank you, Hunter. You can say something is uncommon, but just because it doesn't happen often doesn't mean that it's not normal. Normal is just an arbitrary standard that you are setting that no one else honestly could give a shit about. But unfortunately, a lot of people apply this standard of normalcy to people, and if you don't fit into their category of what they think is socially acceptable, Acceptable, they judge you for it. And whenever it comes to people differing on their sexual orientation or the way that they identify whenever it comes to gender, there are a lot of factors obviously that come into play whenever discussing these things, but for the sake of argument, I'm going to stick to biological arguments because whenever it comes to talking about what's normal or natural, there are biological reasons that go behind a lot of these things that I think are important. I made a video actually on this about I think it was four years ago. I hate watching my old videos because a lot of them I I used to be religious back then So I would say as a Christian I think this and this is an example of that But even whenever I was religious I wasn't bigoted or closed-minded enough to know that Gender is not something that we can define by just X Y X X chromosomes There are a lot of different things that happen during fetal development that can determine whether or not you are born female or male There are people out there who have X X chromosomes that are born as a man there are people out there that are XY that are born as a woman biologically. Something could happen where the mother produces extra testosterone or she doesn't produce enough testosterone or the baby has an insensitivity to testosterone. You never know what could happen. So I'm gonna play you a clip from that video I made four years ago. Don't judge me. And I gave you the example already of extra testosterone being introduced. You can also have XY, which would be a man, and the baby has some kind of insensitivity or inability to process the testosterone that is there. So then even though they're XY, they're born a full-fledged female. So that's me about four years ago. I was in my first year of med school, I believe, and I filmed this video outside. I was in the Midwest on a farm in the middle of nowhere. I believe you can hear cows mooing in the background, so not my best video. But at least I wasn't close-minded, even though I said this. You say God created man and God created woman. God created a lot of other variations in between, too. And in my personal opinion, that's how they were supposed to be. Ah, uh, I went there. God made you that way. I do cringe at some of my older videos. And there are a lot of mistakes that I made in that video watching it back, but that was my best attempt at trying to be open-minded and use biological facts to back me up. But I do highly suggest that you seek the advice of trained professionals in this area. I know PZ Myers and I had our falling out years ago, but he is extremely educated in the field of embryology. And I know this because I've seen him debate people using that knowledge and he's absolutely killed it because some people just do not know how to science. So if you want more details to that topic, I will leave a link to an article that he wrote on the pathways to sex in the description below. One interesting thing that he said was, while testosterone is a signal that regulates male ducts, testosterone must be converted into DHT, the signal that regulates development of the external genitalia. Defects in the enzyme responsible for this conversion can lead to individuals with male internal plumbing, including testes, but female external genitalia. Sex isn't all or nothing, but a whole series of switches. And it gets way more complicated than that in the article, but I did want to 
quote that one part because it kind of goes along with what I was saying before. It is not just this simple thing that you can look at XXXY. Chromosomes don't say everything. Sorry, but the idea that you're a man trapped in a woman's body or a woman trapped in a man's body is simply not normal. When people get their body parts hacked off and replaced with new ones during a sex change, that simply is not normal. Getting body parts hacked off? I mean, come on, could you word that in a way that suits your agenda even more? Do you talk about plastic surgeries like that? That girl got a nose job. She got part of her face hacked off. No one talks like this. And let's not forget to mention that a lot of people who are transgender don't even get surgery. So what about them? Despite what the left-wing hypocrites have to say, I don't think we should just shrug our shoulders and accept this very strange behavior. I think we should work together and get these people help. And get these people help. Yeah, you really care about helping them since you made a video so hateful. I'm sure you really care about their general well-being. I posted something about this issue on my Facebook and Twitter earlier today, and I had people even there responding about how they feel these people need help and that we need more developments in the field of psychology so we can figure them out. And you know what? I'm not an expert on this topic, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below, but based off of what I know, you know, the little that I do know about embryology, it's not just a mental thing. You don't think your way into this. There's biology that goes behind it. No amount of conversion therapy is going to change how you developed as a fetus. And regardless of that, conversion therapy has been proven to not work. Are we still in that mindset that gay people aren't right? Do they need to go through conversion therapy too? It's brutal. Google some of the things that they do to people in conversion therapy and tell me you don't think it's really fucked up. And if a transgender person chooses to get gender reassignment surgery, it's not something that they can just walk into a clinic and get. They have to go through extensive therapy to determine that that's really the best choice for them. Doctors have to determine that this surgery would be beneficial to the person's mental health. This is something that's evaluated. They have to get letters of recommendation. It's an entire process. It's not just, well, I want to get body parts hacked off today. Put yourself in their shoes. This is something that frustrates me so much that people lack the empathy. They lack the ability to imagine what it would be like to feel that way. They can't imagine it. Therefore, they don't even think about somebody else's feelings. Well, I don't have to deal with it. Therefore, it's not a problem. In 2015, a John Hopkins psychiatrist named Dr. Paul McHugh says that being transgender is a mental disorder and a sex change is biologically impossible. Dr. Paul McHugh. Well, let's look up this guy and see what the internet has to say about him. Oh, check it out. Meet the doctors social conservatives depend on to justify anti-transgender hate. Of course this guy would get mentioned. Apparently he has something against the entire LGBT community and he's been widely debunked. The entire notion that gender is just a social construct and you can pick and choose your gender is a bunch of Tumblr bullcrap. And that's exactly what I'm saying. You cannot pick and choose your gender. It's something that is inside of you and you cannot change it. Glad we agree on something. Dipshit. This absolutely ridiculous idea opens the door to all kinds of insanity. Oh, here we go. Slippery slope fallacy. For example, this 52-year-old father ditched his family and now identifies as a six-year-old girl. I can't deny I was married. I can't deny I have children. But I've moved forward now and I've gone back to um, being a child. Even worse, this 20-year-old Norwegian nutcase identifies as a cat now. I am now 20 years old. I have been a cat you think she's crazy right now? Just wait until you see her after she's eaten a catnip. Because of this ridiculous gender notion, you are opening the door to insanity. Oh, okay. That's that's how we're gonna do it. Alright, let, let me try this. Let me be you for a second. Oh my god, so I was at this barbecue with this girl, Jacqueline Blen, and she wouldn't eat the meat, okay? She wouldn't eat the steak, and she wouldn't eat the chicken because she cared about animals, and she ate tofu. Ew, I mean, that is just not normal. People were meant to eat meat. What she's doing is not normal, and it's not natural. I mean, if you're gonna eat tofu and not eat what I I think you should be eating, that just opens the door to eating a bunch of other crazy shit. She doesn't want to eat animals, so what is she gonna do? Start eating inanimate objects? That's what's next. Slippery slope fallacy. My name is Bria. I'm 19 years old. And I'm addicted to eating sand. I just love the crunch. It's always good on top of food, like a seasoning or something. I've taken a tortilla chip, dipped them in sand, and ate them, and it gave the chip the best crunch that I've ever got in my entire life. My name is Jennifer, and I'm addicted to eating mattresses. And sometimes hair be in there, and I have to pull it out 
Yeah, see those examples totally make sense, so if you're a vegetarian and you don't eat meat, then the next thing is definitely gonna be mattresses and sand. Chromosomes are what give you your gender, and they cannot be changed. It doesn't matter how much testosterone or how much estrogen you get pumped into you. That's just flat out incorrect. I've already explained that you can have an XY chromosome and be born a full-fledged female if the baby in utero has some insensitivity to testosterone. Also, you can be XX and be born a man. Chromosomes do not determine your gender. And if you insist on talking about these topics and claiming that what you're saying is fact, then maybe you should get a medical education so you actually know what the hell you're talking about. And lastly, truth is, Transgenders deserve rights, just like everyone else, but they do not deserve extra rights. Oh my god, this argument. This is the same shit that I've been hearing for years whenever it comes to LGBT rights. Back whenever gay marriage was not legalized, they don't want equal rights, they want extra rights. As though marriage wasn't something that straight people could do that gay people couldn't. They wanted the equal right to be able to get married. Transgender people want the equal right to be able to take a shit in the appropriate bathroom. And I know a lot of people have issues with this, which is why I made a video on it earlier, where I think we should just have gender neutral bathrooms. I think that that would solve the entire problem. Who cares? A man dressing up as a woman just so that he can go into a woman's restroom and creep on women is illegal. And whether or not transgender people are allowed the equal rights that they should have does not change the fact that doing illegal shit is illegal and that you could be arrested for it. This is not in any way condoning creepers in bathrooms. And also, transgender people aren't doing that kind of thing. You do not hear stories about transgender people creeping. It doesn't happen. That's not the kind of person that you need to view as a predator because statistically, they're not. And now, just for fun, let's take a look at the bigoted comments in his comment section. And I cannot believe that this video still has more likes than dislikes. Transgender people be like, let's play dress up. Because apparently cross-dressing is the same thing as transgender. I identify as carbon dioxide so stop the hate. Ah, oh, this is so stupid. Of course you're gonna see a bunch of I identify as random thing in the comment section below, but it's so stupid and it's such ignorant thinking and such a stupid argument. It's a non-argument. Yet 35 people were like, yeah, that's awesome. Seven and a half years of Obama and people don't know what bathroom to use. Enough said. Yeah, this is Obama's fault. Thanks, Obama. I sexually identify as Ann used tampons. Jesus Christ, 57 likes. 57 people saw that grammatically incorrect, stupid sentence and were like, that's awesome. Do not know how to grammar. Hence this shirt that I'm wearing. I don't know if you can see it, but it says, I'm smarter than you're. It's appropriate for that comment. Shameless self-promotion, that shirt is available on my website, JacquelineGlenn.com, so check it out. Hallelujah, there's one comment, one comment that I agree with. The truth about Christians like Hunter Avalon is they don't give two shits about nature, children, or people. They just want to go after whatever vulnerable group they can to bully them. There is a reason young people are leaving their churches in droves. They sure give God a bad name. You give God a bad name. Anyways, that pretty much sums up my thoughts on this topic. Let me know everything that you think in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Check out all my social media links. Links are in the description. And if you want to get this awesome t-shirt, I'm smarter than you are, check it out on my website. And don't forget to subscribe. And thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon. I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. What is the Jews? This is literally my grandpa. The Jews bring with them a unique destructive force. There is no race that is as destructive as the Jews.